most of the wildflowers that are in bloom towards the end of the year tend to be species that can get through their entire life cycle in a couple of weeks, from germination to seed production, uh, which lessens the chances that they're going to run into a spell of really bad weather. And many of them are species of bare ground, which lessens the competition from uh, the surrounding vegetation. So a very good place to look for these weeds is on arable land, and particularly on the arable land of an organic farm. Uh, where herbicides are not used to control the weeds to the great benefit of soil, of the crop itself, of biodiversity and the environment in general, and of course the weeds themselves. A weed, by the way, is simply a plant that's growing where we don't want it to grow. So a rose bush in a barley field would be a weed just as much as ragwort in a meadow would be. And here I am, surrounded by different weed species, but the species that we're going to devote our attention to today is this. It's common field speedwell, which is the, the commonest of more than a dozen species that live in this part of the country. Uh, the plant itself is somewhat weak and straggly. The flowers developing one at a time, opening after breakfast in the morning and closing before tea time. Uh, there are four hairy sepals and four petals uh, with just two stamens fused to the corolla. Speedwells are among the most elegantly zygomorphic of all wildflowers. Notice first of all the precise angle at which the flower is held, able to look its visitors in the eye. In other words, it has determined in advance the direction of approach of pollinators and so can position its stamens and stigma to optimal effect. The uppermost petal is curved like a scallop shell and ribbed with the most easily interpreted of bright blue nectar guides, as are the two side petals, also slightly cusped, the guide lines converging on the white eye of the flower. The lowest petal is much smaller and paler in colour and has just a hint of a nectar guide line. The nectar is in a shallow well at the centre and there is a dense circlet of crystalline spikes blocking entry to the throat that prevents dilution of the nectar. If a visiting insect lands on the lower petal, its head will immediately come in contact with the stigma and it will be liberally patted with pollen from the downward dehiscing stamens. These are very distinctive, just the two of them, with conspicuous deep blue anthers and conspicuously gleaming white filaments that are curved and flattened. The stamens are held invitingly forward in the flower, the style and stigma between and just below the anthers. If the visitor lands on the filaments, its weight will cause them to sag because their attachment to the petals is so delicate, and its abdomen will come into contact with the stigma in the process. The filaments are curved away from each other, but the insect's legs will draw them closer together, an action that causes the anthers to swivel through whatever angle is needed to dust the visitor with pollen. A unique character of the stamen is that the top of the filament narrows to a point on which the open anther is centrally balanced so that it can swivel every which way. The pollinators are hoverflies and small bees. Modest though they appear, the flowers can be an important source of food for bees in times of scarcity because they are so widespread and can be found in flower all the year round. As soon as fertilisation has taken place, the corolla skirt with its attached stamens will detach as a single unit and the sepals would close over the developing capsule inside. But as that matures, as the capsule ripens, you can see the way in which the sepals move back again and the heart-shaped seed capsule uh, is beginning to swell with its 8 to 16 seeds inside. The number of seeds in the capsule is an important taxonomic characteristic if you're trying to separate this particular species of speedwell from several other much less common species. The scientific name for common field speedwell reveals something rather amazing about its provenance. The scientific name is Veronica persica. Now the generic part of the name Veronica, I will say something about on a different occasion, but the specific bit, the specific epithet Persica means Persian. Uh, 
because the plant is native to southwestern Asia, where it was first described in the early years of the 18th century by the German botanist Johann Christian Buxbaum in fields around what at the time was Constantinople. The species is thought to have originated as a hybrid between two other species of weedy speedwell in the arable fields of the first farmers in northern Iran about 9,000 years ago. And it's rather amazing that here it is growing in profusion today at Lakbura Organic Farm, a farm which is in direct continuity with the first organic farms of 9,000 years ago. As it is on Arab land over much of the temperate world, it's spread now into Europe, across Europe, uh, into Eastern Asia, uh, North America, Australia and New Zealand. Where weeds, for all their ecological ingenuity and the wonder of their lives, are cursed as roundly as they are here in a thousand other different languages.